not out of the woods. You're looking at the wife of a police officer assaulting a man outside a Fall City bar. The attack caught on surveillance cameras. But this turned into so much more. That woman was arrested, and the officer found himself in hot water after he flashed his badge, lied during a traffic stop, and then tried to pull rank to get his wife released from jail. And tonight, we're looking into an investigation that uncovered additional misdeeds by that police officer, including an on-the-clock sex toy prank. That officer has been demoted, but he's not out of the woods just yet. As Matthew Smith reports, he could lose his badge altogether as the state agency is now looking into the situation. I've never seen anything like this ever, actually. Like most dive bars, the Last Frontier Saloon could tell some stories. Andrew Goodman, a regular, can attest. They went zero to 60 in like five seconds. There are few like what was captured on surveillance video last October. This is Goodman being kicked by Jennifer Rogenkamp. The guy next to her is her husband, Mercer Island Police Sergeant Todd Rogenkamp. And if the tuxedo T didn't tip you off, he's not on official duty. He left a wedding and hit this Fall City bar with friends. But when last call came and went, and when the doors closed, the Rogan camps found themselves on the rocks with employees outside. Turns out, Mrs. Rogan Camp had left her phone inside, so Mr. Rogan Camp demanded that they open back up. This badge says I can get in the building, is verbatim what he said. That moment appears here on video. The flashing of his badge, just the beginning of his problems. Uh, shortly after that, a kick, an attempted slap, a fall, and yet another kick came from Mrs. Rogan Camp. 911, what's the address of the emergency? Leading Goodman to call the cops on a cop. Challenge my friend and I to fight because he knew the rule of racial combat in the state of Washington, which we both declined. To say awkward would be an understatement. Justin McMartin is Goodman's friend. He saw the whole ordeal go down. I don't know how else to describe it. It was just weird. During that call, Rogan Camp jumped in the back seat of a truck and drove off with another couple. But King County deputies caught up and pulled them over on eastbound I-90. But things only escalated. Deputies say Todd was egging on his friend who was driving the vehicle to take off because of the police pursuit laws. They also say he lied about seeing the assault, calling the deputy a f amateur. When asked about flashing his badge, he claimed to be a firefighter, which he isn't. The deputy wrote the Rogan camps were, quote, clearly inebriated as displayed by their thick, slurred speech, heavy eyelids, and uncoordinated movements. Deputies booked Mrs. Rogan Camp in the King County Jail in Seattle on an assault charge. Mr. Rogan Camp's boss at the time, Mercer Island Police Chief Ed Holmes, would later write that he was concerned that Rogan Camp drove himself to the jail within one hour of being observed by King County deputies as very intoxicated. According to King County Jail staff, at roughly 3 a.m., Rogan Camp demanded his wife be released from the facility. But when staff told him he'd have to wait until 7 a.m. to post his wife's bail, he threatened to block the sally port, the controlled entry point. Jail staff documented him saying, quote, I'm going to sit here and block all the cops coming in. Ultimately, he decided not to block the entrance. And after Mrs. Rogan Camp was bonded out of jail, prosecutors never charged her with a crime. But all of it, the jail, the combative traffic stop, not to mention him flashing his badge, it added up to nine ethical rules breached per the Mercer Island internal investigation. Now investigators from Washington's Criminal Justice Training Commission are working to determine whether they'll decertify Rogan Camp, meaning that badge he was flashing would be taken away. I don't want to speculate like what kind of officer he would be on duty, but if this is off duty behavior, it makes other officers look bad. It's a badge, not a crown. The investigation also uncovered text messages and pictures of a phallic sex toy. Turns out, while on the clock as the watch commander, he attached a sex toy to his subordinate officer's cruiser just seven days prior to the incident in Fall City. An investigator writing, you then let him drive around the community performing patrol duties in said vehicle for several hours without him knowing the sex toy was attached. Termination was recommended, but Per records obtained by Fox 13, Rogan Camp's union argued and succeeded for a lesser punishment, a demotion.
As a result of all this, Sergeant Rogan Camp would eventually become Officer Rogan Camp. Now, our team reached out to the Rogan Camp family multiple times via text and phone call through the number that they listed on her bail documents. We've yet to hear back. The union has also not responded, but the current police chief of Mercer Island tells us in part, quote, MIPD took immediate action related to this incident, and while we aren't able to publicly discuss the details of personnel processes, corrective action was taken. The police chief submitted the case to the Washington State Criminal Justice Training Commission for their certification review process. Now, that last part may be the most important here. CJTC does have the ability to pull an officer's certification, essentially taking Rogan Camp's badge and his ability to be an officer anywhere in our state. Of course, we'll be following along, and as we learn more, we'll update you.